Uh, hi guys, uh, we're here talking about the diagnosis of endometriosis and I'm super excited about uh, this week's topic. We've been going over this the last couple of weeks talking about what's a screening test, what's a diagnostic test, and some of the different aspects of it. Today we're talking about diagnosis of endometriosis. It's easy to do and we're going to talk about how to get your doctor to do it. These are the basic steps, so stay tuned. Um, now, the laparoscope allows us to look inside so we can see the endometriosis. It's not a question. We're not guessing. Uh, it's either there or it's not. Now, the screening test, the history, gives us the information to know if it's medically indicated to do a diagnostic laparoscopy to look for endometriosis. I think part of the resistance is that, you know, then we get into should it be treated and how it should be treated and am I competent to treat it and all these things. So let's separate that out and I think at least demand to get a diagnostic laparoscopy with appropriate documentation. And what do I mean by that? Well, currently the standard is that the surgeon looks in, sees what they see, and maybe d does whatever procedures they do, and then they dictate it or they make a written document of the interpretation of what they saw or what they thought they saw which may or may not be correct. So what, we, what needs to happen is adequate photo documentation. I'm gonna show you what needs to be done today. So if the proper photographs are taken, then anybody can go back and look at them and double check. And if the surgeon didn't recognize endometriosis and overlooked it, then we can see that. I mean, there's no harm in that, but if we can get the proper steps, then we can start to get um, the right information because Unlike a blood test that's standardized, you can get the same result every single time. With a diagnostic laparoscopy, it's highly dependent upon the surgeon if they know what they're looking for. And so it can be very sensitive or it can be very insensitive, and it can provide the wrong diagnosis saying that you don't have endometriosis. So what I'm going to do is show you the basic steps that are required to diagnose and adequately document the endometriosis. And with that, if you can get agreement ahead of time, then we have the evaluation of your surgeon and you can always get a second opinion to double check. Okay, so hold on one second. I'm going to uh, run around here and push this high-tech uh, lever here. And what we have is a drawing or picture of the uh, pelvis here. And the, um, what we have, this is kind of your up above looking down into your pelvis. So if you could look through your belly button into the pelvis, what we'd have here is the uh, 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 pubic bone up front. We have the bladder behind it. This is the uterus, the right ovary and floping tube here, the left ovary and floping tube. These are the uterosacral ligaments that have nerves go to the lower back pain. So that's why endo here causes lower back pain. This is the sigmoid colon coming down into the rectum. Now, from far away, it's easy to miss endometriosis. So the photo documentation, what we have to do is go in close with the uh, laparoscope and a picture needs to be taken of the left side of the bladder. And then we need a picture of the right side of the bladder. And ideally, so some pictures as close as possible so we can see the detail. And then the left pelvic side wall here, the ovary, it's connected up to the uterus and then it's connected here. So it's kind of like on a door hinge, the ovary flips up and you need to look at all this area under here and to get a close photograph of that. Now, the other thing I almost forgot to mention is we don't see any bowel in here. It's all up above and that's because the patient's head is tilted down. You have to get all the bowel out of the pelvis. You'll see a lot of pictures where bowel's in here and this area here, the pararectal space, we need to look very closely in here and very closely over on the right side. And then another photograph of the picture of the with the ovary flipped up you, ideally looking at both sides of the ovary with photographs to see if there's any endometriosis there. So an overall picture is great, but we need a couple of the bladder. We need close-up photographs of the right pelvic sidewall, left pelvic sidewall, left pararectal space, including the rectovaginal area and the right uh, uh, pararectal area. And with all that, that's how we can get good photographs from the surgery 
that you're going through to be able to double, whoops, double live video, double check this and uh, and to get the answers. And so it, it, it just, it's, it's crazy. So if we take these basic steps, we can get a proper documentation, we can start to get the answer, and then if you have the documentation, yes, I have endometriosis, then we can start to go through step by step, what are the things that can be done to treat the endometriosis, and what are the different options? And so, hopefully this helps. You know, I think if we implemented these few basic easy steps right now, we would be able to get rid of that 10 years of uh, pain and suffering that women are going through. So, uh, so anyway, uh, y'all have a great weekend, and uh, or week, I guess, uh, and uh, we'll talk later. Take care.